Hey, what's going on? And we are here to do a review of State of Origin Game 2 2020. The New South Blues beat Gumby Victory 32 to 10. Now, I'll just be frank with you. I'm a little bit drunk when recording this. So this is my drunk thoughts. Uh, look, had a fair bit to drink over the State of Origin. I think it's a bit of a tradition when State of Origin comes around. You've got to have a drink if you're over 18. I do stress that if you're over 18, you've got to have a bit of a drink. And that's exactly what I did. Now, I sat down. I watched this game. I didn't expect the game to go anything like it did. I thought that this game was going to be a 1-12 to victory for New South Wales. That's what I said in my prediction. I said New South Wales would win 1-12, to like I just said. Uh, and that's exactly what didn't happen. Um, New South Wales got off to a brilliant... Actually, they didn't go off to a brilliant start, actually. Queensland got off to a great start. Xavier Coates in the corner there. And although they scored, it wasn't like a... It wasn't like a oh shit moment where you're like, oh, this is, this is bad news for New South Wales. It's more of like... Oh, well, New South Wales are going to kick into gear now. And that's exactly what happened. At least that's what I thought anyways. Um, although Coates went into the corner, I thought New South Wales had a pretty decent start. Uh, compared to the last game where Queensland spent, sorry, the, the first majority of the first half, sorry, the first half of the first half um, on the front foot, and they couldn't score, but, you know, they were draining energy out of New South Wales. With this one, New South Wales were doing a lot of the attacking, and they weren't getting the results, but you just knew it was going to come eventually. You knew they were going to put something magical together at some point, and that's exactly what happened later on. But Xavier Coates got, them off, uh, got Queensland off to a great start, and look, th th I suppose there was a little bit of doubt. Let's be honest. There was a little bit of doubt when Queensland went over and scored. You thought, oh, shit, here we go. But look, I think realistically, I knew in my mind that New South Wales was going to hit back at some point. Um, I didn't expect Queensland to ever sort of go on with it and score a couple of tries and sort of do what New South Wales ended up doing. I thought New South Wales would hit back eventually um, and sort of make it at least a close game. But I didn't expect it to be uh, as big of a blowout as it was. But New South Wales did hit back pretty quickly. Uh, I will say, though, uh, in Game 1, a lot of the talk was about how New South Wales didn't play well and the halves didn't play well. I thought Nathan Cleary, if he wasn't man of the match, he was bloody well close. He was absolutely outstanding. His kicking game was on point. And that's exactly what he's been doing throughout the regular season. This is something that we've been dying dying to see in the State of Origin arena. A lot of the time, he sort of played second field to your Maloney's and even to um, Luke Keary. Maybe the fact that Luke Keary was kind of a similar sort of dominant sort of half didn't actually work for Luke, uh, didn't actually work for Nathan Cleary. And then having Cody Walker in there, just play in front of him. Uh, I heard his post-game interview and he just said, I'm, I was just there, I'm just going to play some footy. And that's exactly what he did. He scored a nice little try. Uh, a lot of the tries that actually did score down the right-hand edge, he had, a, he had a lot to do with. Um, he was sort of either relaying the last pa pass or or sort of setting up a lot of those overlaps and stuff. I thought Cody Walker had a very, very strong game, and I think he's actually a good combo uh, for Nathan Cleary, whereas Luke Keary, although I think Luke Keary might be their best out-and-out 5'8 out in rugby league at the moment in general, you can you maybe say your Munsters and Whitens and all that sort of stuff. Uh, and look, I, I wouldn't even argue if Whiten was in 5'8 or a few of those guys, but uh, Cody Walker, in terms of a halves combo, I think that might be your best one. Cody Walker, Nathan Cleary. Nathan Cleary can do all the organising, and uh, then Cody Walker can sort of play off the back of it. Now, in my preview, I, saw, I said that the game would sort of come out to be a battle of the backs, and this game, well, in, in game one, we saw the Queensland backs really really sort of dismantle the New South Wales backs. We saw Jack White get ripped apart. We saw Gutherson get um, teared apart at times. Um, it didn't have a terrible game, but that, that Cape Ball one in particular is a big talking point. Now, this game definitely didn't have that. Uh, we saw Jack White score a try. We saw him go over. We saw Gutherson um, getting plenty of ball for um, Ado Carr to go over and score. We saw a great performance from the backs. Uh, even Daniel Tupo looked very, very damaging. Daniel Tupo was actually quite damaging in Game 1, just that one error. It was just more so in Game 1. They weren't particularly bad, just the errors that they made were quite costly. Whereas this game, the errors weren't that bad. I mean, I saw the completion rates. I think it was 40 from 45 or something. And when you're going to be doing that in Origin, especially with the, the New South Wales side, I think you're going to get the victory every single time. Uh, I think New South Wales just had that little bit extra class. So if New South Wales aren't on, Queensland can definitely get the victory. But if, if New South Wales are on like they were tonight, I think you're going to see New South Wales victory every time. Now, the problem here going forward is that this is very similar to last year where Game 2 happened. It was a very similar result. I didn't think it was going to be like this. But Game 2 last year saw a very, very similar result. Uh, New South Wales came out one convincingly and we went into Game 3. I was there in real life. I was there at live. And I remember thinking, New South Wales are absolutely going to carve up Queensland. Now, I don't think that's going to happen. I think Game 3 will be very, very tight. 
but Queensland do need to improve a lot. But I think they'll be heavily uh, influenced by the fact that uh, I would assume Kevin Munz is going to be back for Game 3. Uh, I think him going off very, very early. Now, I think I think New South Wales had... It might have actually been Neil Law at this point, or Queensland had just scored, or New South Wales. It was very early on, is, is the point of this. Um, and I think it did decide the outcome. I think Cameron Munster is a big loss. Uh, ben Hunt, I think, is a good enough origin half. I think he's a good enough origin player. But the fact that the whole game plan went backed on him coming in and acting as that third playmaker, and then all of a sudden chucking him in as the actual fly of eight, I think it just just throws every all of their plans out, and they have to sort of swap and change, and it's just not what you want. In Origin now, a lot of times in Origin they do pick players sort of under the impression that look, if an injury does happen, same New South Wales as AEO, well we can chuck AEO into the centers if needed. And look, if, if an injury happens into the in the halves, we can sort of shift around players. We can chuck Isaiah in the center, chuck White into the halves. But a lot of the times, that doesn't really work in Origin. We saw Daly Cherry Evans. Um, Queensland for a long time ran the whole half on the bench. They had Cooper Cronk doing it, and then Cooper Cronk went to the starting side, and then Daly Cherry Evans came on. And then when the opportunity actually arose, it went so many years where nothing really happened, and they'd chuck him on, and Cherry Evans would play as like a second row or whatever, or a lock, and he'd do a pretty good job, just act as like an extra forward. And then when the time came where an injury actually did happen to the halves, Queensland went to shit and didn't look not did not look good at all. And same thing kind of happened tonight. I feel like Ben Hunt came in and he probably caught a lot of stick for tonight's performance, and I think it's probably undeserved. Uh, look, he's gone into that game not actually expecting to play in the halves. You kind of think that he's expecting to go on, maybe play a bit of hooker if Jack Friends a little bit tired or cops a head knock or something you think that's his most likely position and then the fact that just because he plays halves at club level you think oh well at least he can come on but there's so many different plays and stuff that it is so hard he's playing with a whole bunch of new players you know he's got different players outside of him he's defending i think to ben hunt he probably cop a lot of stick but look it's a hard position to be thrown into mid game and i think most even like your, your most elite sort of halves would really really struggle but Look, if we're going to talk about Haas, we can't go past Nathan Cleary. He, he is the one who has copped a lot of stick, from myself included. Uh, I've been the first to sort of say, Nathan Cleary, if they're going to drop any player, he's probably right at the front with his hand up saying, I should be dropped. Let's just be realistic. Now, him having a man of the match performance tonight, that doesn't mean that we're wrong in the past. He definitely hasn't been good in the past. He's sort of been sort of solid at best. Uh, look, his defense has been always pretty solid, but his tax has been very lackluster. But tonight, that's the Nathan Cleary that we want to see. That's the Nathan Cleary we know is capable of. We've seen him at Penrith doing this, and that's exactly what he did for the Blues. And that's what we've been wanting to see. That's what we wanted to see in Game 1, realistically. Uh, and that's what we wanted to see throughout the whole time of his New South Wales career. But this year in particular, because he really took it to another level uh, for the Panthers this year, they made the grand final, didn't get the job done. And there was always, always those question marks over whether he was able to do it in those high-pressure games. And there's no bigger high-pressure game than a, well, it's not a decider, but it's a do or die for New South Wales. They needed to win. Uh, maybe the, the decider, it does edge it a bit. But uh, in terms of New South Wales, they needed to win this one. Nathan Cleary stood up right from the start. You could tell right from the get-go he was up for it. His kicking game, definitely on it. Uh, and there wasn't those silly errors. We saw in game one, he was getting the ball. He was dropping it just from like a simple pass. This wasn't the case. And I feel like him as well as the whole New South Wales side, they were just on it. And uh, look, I don't want to say it was Luke Keery. Maybe if Luke Keery played, it would have been the exact same result. But I think Cody Walker, look, he got the first try. I think it was a big influence on how the game was played. And also, I feel like he just added that little bit of... Not not, not the side was relaxed because of him, but just um, his ability. Like, he, he's okay. He's happy to play second fiddle. And he's willing to do that. Whereas you have Luke Keery, you've got Nathan Cleary. Both of them want to be the alpha dog, of the alpha male of the team. And well, that might not be a great thing in terms of origin. Even in terms of the Queensland side, when you were having guys like uh, Thurston and Cherry Evans, Cronk and all that, I remember there was a big talk about Cherry Evans. He wasn't up for an origin. And I think the real thing that came out of it was that he just wasn't a good partner for whoever was Thurston or Cronk at the time. Um, because he was kind of similar to him. He wanted to be the alpha male, and, and he wasn't going to be that because they had always been there. They got the respect of the boys, 
And maybe Luke Keery, maybe he would be fantastic if Nathan Cleary wasn't there. But right now, I think Cody Walker, he's your best man for the 5 eight position. And I think he's going to be there going forward. I mean, Jack White, I think, probably would have done a similar, uh, similar role in terms of just taking a step back and just, just being a body, running, playing what's in front of you. But yeah, I thought Cody Walker was, out, was outstanding. I thought Nathan Cleary was even better. I thought Nathan Cleary was man of the match. Talk about Payne, ha Payne Haas getting man of the match. Uh, maybe not got a man of the match, but... Definitely did pack a punch. I thought he was really good when he was on the field. I thought the whole New South Wales four pack was very, very damaging. That Queensland was quite good, uh, but Parley scored a try there. Uh, but look, Payne Haas uh, punching, I can't remember who it was, Tino maybe? I think it was Tino. They both got sim bin, but it was just it was just refreshing to see it. it. Took us back to the good old days uh, where punches were allowed. And I don't want to advocate for punches being thrown left, right, and center, but state of origin, you just you just want to see it. And when it happens, you're like, oh shit, here we go. This is what we want to see. And the fact that Payne Haas did it, uh, look, it just it just really sort of symbolizes origin. Uh, and a lot of the talk, a lot of the talk from me in particular, I remember I was saying to people I was watching with, I was saying, New South Wales just lack those grubs, they lack those sort of dickheads in the squad, as bad as that sounds. Uh, but Payne Haas coming out there, I thought New South Wales did grub it up as much as they needed to. Um, even Nathan Brown was on there, sort of, it started the whole um, kerfuffle, but yeah, I, I was actually kind of relatively pleased to see Payne Haas get the sim in for throwing the punch. I thought it was I thought it was quite entertaining. I thought it was what it was needed, especially at the time at the moment. I feel like State of Origin is probably... The lowest interest is what it's been uh, throughout the whole time like State of Origin's ever existed. So adding that in, I thought it was just a little bit better. You add in that New South Wales were leveling up the series. I think it was just a really, really good game. It's exactly what the Origin series needed, exactly what New South Wales needed, exactly what Queensland didn't need. They didn't need um, New South Wales getting their confidence back. I feel like if Queensland were going to win this series, it was definitely this game. Now, they could come out and win Game 3. Is that some court? Wouldn't be surprised if that happens, but... Uh, look, New South Wales have now got the confidence of doing it. They now have a bit of a game plan, but that game plan means nothing because Cameron Munster didn't play, sort of plans were thrown in disarray. So, look, as much as New South Wales want to look at this and probably say, look, yeah, we, we, we played really, really well, and, you know, that's exactly what we got to do, what we got to do next game. Look, the game plan, I think, from New South Wales was just budget through the middle and then throw it out wide later in the set, and it did work very, very well. Took full advantage of it, even at scrums and that sort of stuff. Took advantage of errors from um, Xavier Coates, made a few errors and that. But look, in general, Cameron Munster is going to be there. He is a big, big addition to the Queensland side. And assuming he is playing, this isn't going to be the same Queensland side. And look, we even saw last year, Corey Norman was quite good. He's kind of like a Cameron Munster light. He's just like a kind of a shittier version of Cameron Munster. And the funny thing was, we're actually able to see that shitty Cameron Munster that I just said, Corey Norman. He's actually a pretty good NRL player, but we, we saw that sort of Cameron Munster light actually able to do a bit of a damage against New South Wales in Game 3 of 2019. And we saw Queensland take New South Wales to the limit. We saw New South Wales getting a last-minute victory. James Tedesco obviously going over and scoring. Uh, we saw Blake Ferguson making that line break at the end there. But look, it was a very close game, and I don't expect this Game 3 to be any different. Um, it's just a matter of what the result's actually going to be. I think New South Wales will get the victory uh, just based off tonight. Now, last year, we saw a very similar sort of result in 2019. We saw New South Wales getting a big blow at victory. Queensland never really in it. I remember Tom Zorovic scoring uh, a couple of tries, maybe a, a try from a bomb. I remember they were wearing that sort of navy blue strip, and I remember thinking going into the game, oh, shit, don't know if New South Wales is going to get... 3-0, and, and the New South Wales came out, smashed Queensland, went into Game 3 thinking, oh, well, we're going to smash them naturally in Game 3 after how good a performance Game 2 was. We're just going to smash them, and it didn't happen. So I can see Game 3 sort of being similar. Uh, I can see New South Wales getting a little bit confident, kind of similar to what they were in Game 1. Uh, but the, the difference is you go into game one and you go, well, at least you've got a second chance. They kind of have that confidence. Whereas game three, if things start to turn, you know it's do or die. You can sort of get back into that mentality as long as it's not too late into the game. And uh, look, New South Wales, they show that even, even the last couple of seconds isn't too late in that game. You can turn it around. And look, I think New South Wales will get the job done. It's just a matter of whether... With the Clearies and that are able to back it up. They've had just had a they just had a stand out game. I thought Nathan Cleary absolutely outstanding. Man of the match. Can he do it in game three though? That's when the game counts. Um, a lot of the talk about Nathan Cleary has been able to do it on the big stage, and he's done it tonight. He's done it in a do or die game. Like I said, man of the match, but it's just a matter of whether he can do it in the last game. Cody Walker, big help. A lot of the New South Wales team. I think they'll be able to write off that experience 
and a lot of the Queensland side are very inexperienced, especially in deciders. I see that being a big point. I don't know if there'll be many changes going to this one. She maybe a few injuries, a few uh, sort of guys getting rested, maybe. Maybe not so much rested, but they'll also be classed as injuries as well. Uh, but yeah, there'll probably also be a couple of guys dropped due to form. I don't think Phillips Semi had a great game. I thought he kind of got exposed. But yeah, in terms of the actual game, I think... It was a good, it was a good game, good quality game. Uh, definitely an improvement on the last game. I thought the last game, a lot of errors, and it just wasn't great watching value. It wasn't great entertainment value. Whereas this one, I thought was quite good. Uh, a lot of points scored. Completion rate was quite good. I think this was more so, uh, you know, getting midway through the season. Last last video, I was talking about how I felt like Origin One felt like the first couple of rounds of the NRL. This one felt like we're getting into the serious end of the NRL. So definitely an improvement. But guys, that's all I've got to say about this video. Leave in the comment section below. What did you think of going to the State of Origin Series? Do you think it was good? Do you think it was bad? Were, were New South Wales deserved winners? I think a lot of people will say yes. But what do you think is going to happen in Game 3? Plenty of stuff to talk about in the comment section below. Make sure you go ahead and do that. Make sure you also go ahead and give the video a like and subscribe to the channel. It's also very important in the growth of my channel. The likes let more people see it and also the subscriptions also do that as well also turn on the notification bell as well it's very important they should be notified uh straight away when i've actually uploaded rather than wait on the youtube algorithm to let you know you can just be notified directly i think it's way better if you're a big fan of the channel definitely do that also make sure to go and give me a follow on social media it's on the screen right now my facebook is also mr luke my snapchat is mr luke and my tea saying what's on the screen right now i think my facebook's on there as well and anyway, guys that's all i've got to say thanks for watching uh, i'll probably do some more videos on origin in fact i definitely will we've got some uh origin sort of teams for game three coming up the next couple of days so we'll be talking about that once they're named but yeah stay tuned for those sort of videos and i'll see you next time bye guys